Hello class and thank you for watching. Now the solutions to the solving linear systems will start with number one. Again, as usual, my disclaimer is that I hope that you have these assignments done before you check, come on and check your solutions. So for the first one, what we need to do is move this one to this side and this over here. So we end up with the X and Y terms on the same side. So what we end up having on the first equation is 3X plus 2y is going to equal to negative 4. Well, we have to do something similar on the bottom equation. Here you'll notice that the x term needs to be on the same side as the y, so I need to move that one to the other side. Mathematically speaking, what I'm doing here is just adding or subtracting to the both sides. In this case, I would subtract it, so I would end up with negative 2x, negative 3y, so negative 2x right there, negative 2x to both sides. So I can cancel it out from that side, and that's going to equal to positive 6. So you see, I'm going to eliminate it from one side and adding it to the other side. So I'm using simply inverse operations. In very simple terms, however, what I'm doing is just changing the sign as I move it to the other side of the equation. Now here, I'm going to decide to eliminate the x values. So I'm going to eliminate these x values right there. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by positive 2 and the bottom equation by positive 3. And we get the following. We're going to end up with 6x plus 4y is equal to negative 8 and negative 6x minus 9y is equal to 18. So adding downwards negative 5y is equal to positive 10 and dividing by negative 5 y is going to equal to negative 2. So now to figure out the value of x I'm going to use this equation here the top one so 3x plus 2y is equal to negative 4 3x plus 2, I'm going to plug in the value of negative y right there. That's going to equal to negative 4. So 3x minus 4 is equal to negative 4. And I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So 3x is equal to 0. And dividing by 3, the value of x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 y is equal to negative 2. So there's your solution. Now for number 2, to line up the variables accordingly, I need to move the x to this side. So for the top equation, we're going to end up with 3x plus 3y is equal to 9. And for the bottom equation, everything is perfect. No manipulation right there. So again, I'm going to eliminate the x on this one. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by positive 2 and the bottom equation by 3. So we're going to end up with 6x plus 6y is equal to 18. And negative 6x plus 12y is equal to 36. Now adding downwards, this is going to eliminate... We're going to end up with 18y. 18y is equal to 454. We divide by 18, and the value of y is 3. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick this top equation right there, and I'm going to replace the y value again with 3. So we have 3x and 3 times 3, that's equal to 9, is equal to 9. So when I subtract 9 from both sides, 3x is equal to 0. And I divide by 3, well, the value of x is 0. So your solution here is 0 and 3.
Now for number four, you'll notice that the eight needs to be on the other side, okay? So for that equation, I need to do that. And for this equation here, I need to, the bottom one, I need to get rid of the f three y and have it on the, this side and the five, have it on the other side like that. So using inverse operations or very simply what that means is I just simply get the opposite sign because I'm gonna basically subtract the eights on the top one. So I ended up ne negative three x minus the four y and subtracting the eight from both sides, I get a negative eight. And here I would add the three x to both sides. So I end up with a positive three x, a positive two y, and five becomes a positive five when I move to the other side, okay, in very simple terms. Now in this one, you're gonna notice that, oh, sorry, put the wrong signs, okay? So hold on, let me fix that. It's gonna be two x and plus three y, okay? So what I was saying on this one, you're gonna notice again, that I have two options. I can eliminate the x's or the y's, but again, I'm gonna eliminate the x's. Since these are already opposites of each other, or different signs already, I can eliminate that. I can do the same thing with the y's, but I'm just focused on eliminating the x's here. So if I eliminate the x's, multiplying the top equation with two and the bottom equation with three, we end up with the following. We end up with negative six x minus eight y is equal to negative 16 and positive 6x plus 9y is equal to 15. So if I add going downwards, this again gets eliminated like I want it to. We end up with 1y is equal to negative 1. So the value of y is equal to negative 1. So now I'm going to pick again the top equation using this top equation right there. We're gonna end up with negative three X minus four Y is equal to negative eight. And we're gonna replace the Y value with negative one. So negative three X positive four is equal to negative eight. We'll subtract four from both sides and negative three X is equal to negative 12. We divide by negative 3, and x is equal to positive 4. So your solution is positive 4, negative 1. Now for number 4. Find number 4, here we go. The top equation is okay. The only thing is that I need to switch the order of the x and the y. I want the x to be first. So now I'm going to put negative 4x plus three y is equal to negative five. So all I did was just move this number to the front of the number right there. So I don't have to change the signs on that. I'm just switching the order of those two terms. However, for the bottom one, I do need to eliminate that negative six x on the left, on the right side. So it could be on the left side with the y. So that would make this a positive six x Positive, positive 6x, a positive 4y is equal to a positive 16. So here, uh, I guess I'll eliminate the, uh, the x values yet again. Now, one sure way of finding the common multiple, again, the whole idea right here is we find the common multiple is to use the other number. So I'll multiply the top one by six, so I can multiply the other one by four. But if you pay close attention again, another way of getting these two numbers to be the same is to make them equal to 12 because they do share that common multiple of 12. So if I multiply the top one by three and the bottom one by two, that would also work. But the easiest thing again, the one that always works is just to multiply by using the other number. That guarantees that the values are gonna be the same. So let's see, multiplying the top equation by six, I'm gonna end up with negative 24 x plus 18y is equal to negative 30. The bottom one will give me positive 24x plus 16y is equal to 64. So adding going downwards, if we add the two terms going downwards, 
we end up with uh, 4, 2, 3, 34y and 30 minus negative 30 minus 64 that's supposed to be 30 20 36 hold on I made a mistake somewhere hold on negative 4x plus 3y is equal to negative 5 positive 6x plus 4y is equal to 16. So multiplying all of this, we end up with negative 24, 18y, negative 30, 24y plus 16, and 64. Yes, 4 times 16 is 64. So adding 18 and 16, that's equal to 34. And 64 minus, oh, it's 30. 60 is 34. Sorry, I was doing my math wrong. So that is going to be 34. Sorry. I was having a little mental fart right now. So, but in fact, it is going to equal to 34. So now when we divide by 34, the value of y is equal to 1, yes, which is what we were supposed to get. So now, using the top equation, negative 4x plus 3y is equal to negative 5, I'm going to replace the y value again with the number 1. So we end up with negative 4x plus 3 is equal to negative 5. If I subtract 3, negative 4x is equal to negative 8 and divide by negative 4 x is equal to positive 2 so there is your solution your solution is going to be 2 and 1 remember to put those in alphabetical quarters 2 goes first and then 1 goes second so for number 3 when we rewrite this, you should end up with negative 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 8. And for the bottom one, it should be negative 3x plus 2y is equal to negative 12. Okay, now I'm going to eliminate the x. Now let's eliminate the y terms. So we're going to multiply the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 3 since these signs are already opposites of each other. So negative 4x minus 6y is equal to negative 16. When we multiply this by 2 and multiplying everything over here by 3, we end up with negative 9x plus 6y is equal to negative 36. So let's add. So this is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with negative 13x. And six, negative 16 plus negative 36, that's equal to negative 52. And dividing, we end up with 4. So the value of x is going to be 4. So now I'm going to use the top equation. Negative 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 8. I'm going to plug in the number 4 right there. And we end up with negative 8 minus 3y is equal to negative 8. So here I would have to add the 8 to both sides. That cancels out. And we end up with negative 3y is equal to 0. So when we divide by negative 3, excuse my sloppy handwriting, the value of y will be 0. So we got our solution. 4, 0. That's where the two lines are going to intersect. Okay, let's go to number 6 now. So for number 6, when we rewrite this equation, like I mentioned in class, this right here, if I just read it backwards, the x and y value are on the same side. So this is could just switch in the order. I can rewrite this as 4x minus 5y, just flipping these two numbers around. 
and that's going to equal to negative 8. The bottom equation, it's already set up for us the way we wanted the x, the y, and the constant. And now we can use the process of elimination to cancel out either the x or the y's. Here, I'm going to go back to canceling out the x's since these already have different signs. So we're going to multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 4. So for the top one, we end up with 12x plus, tw min I'm sorry, minus, minus 12y is equal to negative 24 and negative 12x uh, minus 12y is equal to negative 24 as well. So when we add downwards, the positive and negative 12, that's equal to 0. The negative 12 and negative 12, that's equal to negative 24y. And the negative 24 plus the negative 24, that's equal to 48, negative 48. So dividing by negative 24, the value of y is going to be positive 2. So I'm going to pick the top equation like I usually do, 4x minus 4y is equal to negative 8. And I'm going to replace the y value with 2. So 4x minus 8 is equal to negative 8. You add 8, and 4x is equal to 0. So when you divide, that means that x is 0. So that's our solution. Our solution is 0 for the x and 2 for the y. All right, moving along to the next one. OK, so here, the top equation is pretty much set for us. All right, so we have 3x plus 4y is equal to 4. It's the bottom equation, and we have a problem because we have two things. First, we have a fraction, right? So the first thing we want to do is multiply everything by 3, OK? So if I multiply everything by 3, we end up with 3y plus 2x is equal to 3. So again, I'm multiplying everything by 3. And again, remember the trick with multiplying a fraction with a whole number, especially with the number I'm picking. I'm picking to multiply by 3 so I can get rid of that denominator, okay, because of that 3. The only reason why I'm doing that is that these, again, numbers will cancel each other out. So this 3 times 2 is 6, but then you're going to divide it by this 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we end up with this equation there. So if I just rearrange the variables, put the 2x in the front, the 3y second, and have it equal to 3 in that order, then everything is lined up the way I want it to. So for the top, I'm going to get rid of the x's. Uh, so I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2 and the bottom equation by a negative, this time by a negative 3. And that way I can end up with a positive 6x on the top. Okay, so you can see, I'm just going to keep writing it to the left, so I could end up with a positive 6x, positive 8y, and a positive 8. And for the bottom, I'm going to end up with a negative 6x, a negative 9y, and a negative 9. Again, as you see, the, the important thing here is multiplying by that negative also, because without that, these two things would not be opposites. But now that they are, they eliminate and adding everything else down, I end up with negative 1, y is equal to negative 1. So when I divide, the value of y is positive 1. Now to figure out the x value using the top equation, 3x plus 4y is equal to 4, I'm going to plug in that y value, that positive 1 y value there. All right, so we end up with 3x plus 4 is equal to 4. If I subtract by 4, 3x is equal to 0. So that means that x is 0 yet again, OK? So dividing by 0, we get that. And the reason I picked a lot of these answers to have was 0 is because uh, I want you to make sure that you know that 
you end up again with zero as a value for x in those situations. Many of y'all, again, get confused and don't know what to do in that situation and what that means. Well, that just simply means that the variable, the value of that variable is going to be zero. So dividing this by three, dividing by this by three, we get that. So zero, one. Now for number eight, moving along to number eight, again, we're looking at rewriting this. So rearranging again everything and putting things in opposite order, the three X will become positive. The positive four Y would stay the same, but this 12 to the other side will make it positive 12. Over here, we have a negative two X. Having to move this to the other side, will make that a positive three Y, and it's gonna to equal to nine. So we're gonna do now, so I'm going to eliminate again the x terms since there are already different signs. Multiply the top and the bottom by 2 and 3 respectively. And we're going to end up with the following. Multiplying the top by 2, we end up with 6x plus 8y is equal to 24. And the bottom, we end up with negative 6x plus 9y is equal to 27. So let's add downwards our x's get eliminated. We end up with 17y and 24 plus 27, that's equal to 51. So the value of y would be 3. It's 51 divided by 17. Now, like usual, I'm going to pick the top equation. So 3x plus 4y is equal to 12. I'm going to plug in right there the number 3. So 3x plus 12 is equal to 12. 4 times 3, remember, is 12. What I'm doing there is just multiplying. I know I haven't said it in a while, but just to remind you, that's how I'm getting those numbers, multiplying those values. Now when I subtract by 12, I get again that 3x is equal to 0, so that again, that means that x is 0. So 0, 3. Number 9, when I rearrange this, we're going to end up with positive 2x, positive 2y is equal to a positive 6. Here we end up with negative 2x positive 2y is equal to negative 2. So this one, I don't even have to multiply. Look, these are already opposites. So if I just simply add downwards, this automatically will eliminate. We end up with 4y is equal to 4, and that means that the value of y has to be 1. So picking the top equation, so I'm going to pick this equation right here. 3, I'm sorry, 2x plus 2y is equal to 6. I'm going to plug in the number 1 in for y yet again. So 2x plus 2 is equal to 6. I subtract 2, and 2x is going to equal to 4. So the value of x is 2. Positive 2, 1. Now for number 10, um, we have to rearrange it and we end up with a positive 8x, positive 4y is equal to negative 8. So on the bottom, we have to move two things, the x to, I mean, sorry, the negative 3 to that side and the x to this side. So negative 1x minus 1y is equal to positive 3. So, uh, again, I'm going to eliminate the x values, so I'm going to multiply the top equation by 1, the bottom equation by 8. So this is what we end up with. So we end up with positive 8x, positive 4y is equal to negative 8. Multiplying the bottom equation by 8, we end up with negative 8x minus 8y is equal to 24. So adding downwards, this becomes 0. This is going to be a negative 4y. 
and this is going to be positive 16. We divide, so the value of y is negative 4. So now let's use the top equation and let's plug in that number. So 8x plus 4y is equal to negative 8. We're going to plug in 4 there. So 8x plus 16 is equal to negative 8. I subtract 16 from both sides. And 8x is going to be Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The value of x is supposed to be 1. Oh, yes, that's why. Negative 4. I forgot that I was supposed to plug in a negative 4. So let me fix that. Sorry about that. So that gives me negative 16 is equal to negative 8. So then I would add 16. So that would give me a positive 8. And yes, when I divide by 8, x is going to equal to 1. So that's the answer that I needed. Okay. So it was this right here was supposed to be plugged in a negative 4. So the solution would be positive 1 and negative 4. Good thing I caught that mistake before I continued. All right, so now for number, the last two for number 11, we would rewrite and moving things to the opposite sides, the 1 and the 3y, we would end up with this. And for the bottom equation, moving things to the opposite sides, we would end up with this. So now that everything's aligned, I'm going to find a common multiple for the, uh, this one right here. And what I'm going to do here again is I can multiply the top the top equation simply by three, so that these two numbers are six, okay? Because again, the idea is to get these uh, a set of numbers to be the same. So right here, I can get these two numbers to be six if all I do is multiply the top equation by three. But you know what? I'm just going to keep to the strategy I've been using. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by six and the bottom equation by two. That way, I end up with the same multiple. So I end up with negative 12x plus 18y is equal to 6. And the bottom equation will be positive 12x plus 8y is equal to negative 20. So we're going to add going down. This becomes 0. This is going to become... Hold on, negative, negative 1. This should be a negative sign right here. Negative 1, so it should be a negative 6. All right. Sorry about that. Let's fix that before we continue. So that, because this is positive over here, it would become negative 1. So I, I, let me check that everything else is right. Yes, this positive 10 on the other side becomes negative 10. Okay, so there. So adding 18 and 8, that's going to equal to... 26y, negative 6 plus negative 20 is negative 26, so the value of y would be negative 1. So now using the top equation, negative 2x plus 3y is equal to negative 1, I would plug in the negative 1 again into the y value, so negative 1. And we end up with negative 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. minus 3, not 3y, just minus 3. Because again, the y is taking the place of the, no, negative 1 is taking the place of the, of the y. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Now here I would have to add 3, and negative 2x would equal to negative positive 2. So when we divide, x is equal to also negative 1. So the x and y values are both negative 1. So this is your point of intersection. And finally, for the last one, before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is get rid of that fraction, okay? 
So to get rid of this fraction, since the denominator is 2, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. And that would get rid of that, leaving you only with 1y. But everything, again, also has to be multiplied by 2. So we end up with a negative 4, a positive 2x is equal to 1y. Okay, so now I'm going to rearrange it and moving things in the proper place. This would have to go to this side and the negative 4 would have to go to the other side. Rearranging that top equation, we would end up with a positive 2x, a negative 1y is equal to a positive 4. And rearranging the bottom equation, x positive 1y. Those don't switch signs because they're already on the same side. I just need to move the 2 to the other side. So on the other side, I would have to have added it, so it becomes plus 2. Now, let's see. We can eliminate automatically the y's. Since the y's are already opposites, if I add downwards, a negative 1 and a positive 1 becomes 0 automatically, so no need to multiply. And then we end up with 3x is equal to 6, so the value of x is 2. Now, using this top equation right there, using that equation, 2x minus 1y is equal to 4, I plug in the x value, I plug in the 2 into the x value, not the y value, the x value, and we get 4 minus 1y is equal to 4. So if I subtract 4 from both sides, negative 1y is equal to 0. And dividing anything, 0, by any number still gives me 0. So the value of y is equal to 0. So the solution here will be 2, 0. All right, and there you go. Again, thank you for checking your work. But again, like I said, checking your work that you're not just simply copying the answers to, from here. Though again, the best way of learning this is to try it yourself and see when you don't get the right answer, you can't figure out what to do now, is to check again. Use this video as a way of checking your work and verifying how to move on through this, okay? So again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.